Don't tell anybody I'm out here. I'm supposed to be working inside, but I can't help it. My plants are calling to me, so I've got to get these into their containers. So don't tell anybody, but come with me and let's pot up my herbs and my annuals into my container gardens this year. Welcome to Harmony Hills. Don't tell anybody we're here, but today we're gonna to be putting my flowering annuals and my herb garden into some containers. Some of them will stay in this area and others of them might find their way around the garden somewhere else. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, by the way, I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Thanks for joining me today here. Um, I do have some work on my computer that I really should be doing. I'm kind of running behind on it, but I mean, that's all volunteer work and they're not paying me for it and I'll get it done by the deadline. So yeah, I can be out here playing in the garden. Sure, why not? Um, I have these flowering annuals, which I've picked out and I have these herbs, which I've picked out. And these are the pots from which I have to choose. If I run out of pots, then I'll have to go into my collection of black nursery cans. I do have some uh, plain looking, kind of nice looking black nursery pots that are pretty big. So those could be an option as well. Um, I'm not sure what pots are going to be used for what purpose. So come along with me and let's figure it out. Okay, I've shown you these herbs before in my plant haul video from Frank's that came out last week. Um, but just to remind you, I've got um, one container of chocolate mint. Mmm, smells so good. That goes into a pot somewhere. I have uh, lemon balm. So nice. Golden sage with this beautiful variegation. Golden oregano, which is so beautiful. Variegated oregano, which also is beautiful in a very different way. And then I have these two lemon thyme, which I purchased at a different time. Mm, they smell so fresh, lovely. Two lemon thymes. And then from seed this year, I started some common thyme and some spearmint. And I think I've only got one, two, three spearmint plants growing in here. Uh, the rest of these are weeds and look, a viola actually <laughs> popped up on its own there. But um, so uh, three spearmint is plenty though because they are so vigorous. I have one rosemary plant here that I purchased oh, a couple weeks ago, I don't remember. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this into the herb category, although it's not an herb for sure. Uh, these strawberries, which I have in this stackable planter. So I do have one strawberry flower here, yay, and another bud coming along. This plant, no buds yet over here. No, not yet. So hopefully we'll end up with at least two strawberries off of these plants. Um, I think I might put some of these herbs into the other parts of this stackable container. Right behind here I have some oregano that I planted uh, I think three or four years ago and it's doing really well. Um, so uh, I think that the containers of herbs will be in this general vicinity for the summer and it'll uh, when the season is over I'll probably take them out of their pots and stick them in the ground and see which ones come back and which ones don't. I don't usually do very many flowering annuals, but um, because because honestly, I'm really bad about remembering to water them. Um, but this year I'm gonna try again and we'll see. I have one Prince Tut grass, which I showed you in my Frank's plant haul. This is gonna be the centerpiece of that big gray pot. Honestly, I thought that that gray pot was bigger when I was picking out my plants. It's not actually all that big. So we'll see how many plants I can fit in with the Prince Tut. But this one will get to be about three or four feet tall if it gets the conditions that it likes. So I'm hoping that that will happen. I have a collection of plants here, which I think all blend together really nicely in the color family. So uh, the center of this color choice was this lantana. This is bandana mango lantana from Monrovia. It's got really pretty reds and um, yellows in it, but also tinges of pink. And so I thought that that was a really nice centerpiece that's got all the colors of the rest of my plants, which are this calibrachoa, which is um, aloha canary yellow from uh, Monrovia. So that blends nicely color wise. Uh, and then these pentas, which are um, Actually, this doesn't have a color name on it. It's just a nice 
clear fuchsia pink pentas. I have three of those. And then over here I have these Calibrachoa, which are also Monrovia, and they're called Mini Famous Uno Pink. And so I just thought that this color combination was really nice with this lantana bringing everything together. And then for some trailing interest, I picked up two more of these, which my husband calls pterodactyl plants, but they're really called Purple Queen or Setcresia purpurea. So these are just a foliage plant, but they're really beautiful, rich, um, purpley purple and greens mixed together. So that's what I have here. So we need to figure out what is going into which pot. As far as my pots are concerned, I don't know if you can see me, it doesn't matter if you can see me. This is a planter that I just purchased this year and this actually matches two that I have in the backyard. Um, these I also purchased this year. I'm not sure why, I was drawn to the vibrant color but um, actually I have nothing else in the garden that is that color so i'm not sure where i'm going to end up putting those this is a container i've had for a long time you can see it's all dried up it's a uh, really poorly managed house plant is what it is with a jade cutting that is really shriveled and dying so this wants to be cared for better same with this container um, this I, I probably will put this jade over here and reinvigorate this soil a little bit and try to get this uh, cactus back into some good shape. And then I have three of these. These are just dollar store planters that I painted with some white paint just to change up the coloration on them. Of course, the spider plants in them are totally dying. Although I have a suspicion these are so vigorous and hardy of a plant that if I were to take these out and moisten them and put them in some good soil and trim them up, I bet I would get spider plants back from these. But anyway, I have three of these. And then finally, one just terracotta pot with a totally dead cactus in it. So, uh, and that, these are what I have to choose from, plus the stackable planter. So let's see what we end up with. And as far as soil goes, what I've done is I filled my wheelbarrow halfway full with some compost from my pile on the driveway. And then I put some peat moss in there. Uh, this is really, really dry, so I've had to add a lot of water. And then I found a bag of potting mix that I had purchased who knows how long ago, and it had been sitting in the garage uh, in the back corner, buried under stuff, and I didn't know it was there until yesterday. And so I put that in here too. That had a little bit of perlite in it and a little bit of fertilizer in it, uh, and it was bone dry. So I mixed those three things together compost, peat moss, and some potting mix from a bag. And I mix them together and I put lots and lots and lots of water. And so now I have a nice moist soil mix here that I'll be using in my containers. All right, so this is perfect. These pots did not come with holes in them, so I drilled some holes in. So I'm gonna leave this plastic on until after I get it all potted up and put into place, just because that'll keep it cleaner. All right, I'm not gonna fill it all the way up. I'm gonna leave room for root balls and then I'll also have some soil nearby that I can put in there to top it off if I need to. Well, I thought I would start with my um, stackable planter here. I had put in 10 bare root strawberries into this container and of the 10, only three of them took. So I have three strawberry plants growing in the top, but that means I have seven other holes into which I could put herbs. And I'm thinking that uh, it would be nice to have some of the herbs in here that like to trail. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take out the bare root strawberries that died and, or actually just never grew take those out and I might refresh the soil a little bit and then I'm going to plant in some of these um, uh, herbs. Okay I don't have any gloves with me today so this is going to be a messy job and I'm not dressed for it because I'm not supposed to be out here but anyway oh and my plants are over there. All right I have a lot of things to choose from I've got some of this common thyme. Um, I've got a lot of those I've got 12 of those so I could probably put some of that in more than one. Um, I have two of these lemon times. Oh God, they smell so good. So that can go in one for sure. Uh, I could put this in the ground next to some of this other or separate them or whatever. I could be creative with it, couldn't I? Uh, then the uh, variegated oregano and the golden oregano and the go uh, variegated sage, golden sage. Um, I kind of want this to be near each other. So, uh, and then the lemon balm, the lemon balm doesn't want to be in a pot this small, so I'll put this in a different spot. 
and same with the mint both the chocolate mint and the spearmint that I have over here they don't want to be in such a small pot and so I'm going to put them in their own pots okay so um, uh, let's start by taking this apart and getting these out of here that was easy um, I got these stackable planters at the Dollar Tree earlier this spring. Um, they are kind of, you know, an imitation of a more expensive version that you can find at the garden center. Um, I think that they're worth a dollar for sure. So for three dollars, I'm going to get this stackable herb tray and um, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, all right, so as far as the soil goes, this soil really wasn't used because the plants didn't grow. So all the nutrient value of this soil that I put in here earlier is still here. So um, I think I'm just going to use this soil again without fixing it up with any more soil, but I will put in some fertilizer. Actually, let me go get the fertilizer. I forgot to do that. I thought I had some plant tone, which would be good for everything I'm planting today, but I don't. So I'm gonna use this biotone. This is the starter fertilizer that I use in all my perennial holes, trees and shrubs and all that. It will be fine for this too. This uh, biotone is special and different from other fertilizers in that it has uh, microorganisms in it that help root development, um, which is of course good for every plant. So it won't hurt anything, that's for sure. Um, I'm just not sure how this will be for the long-term summer prospects. I'll probably come back in in a month or so with some plant tone or maybe flower tone or some general purpose fertilizer in addition to this now. So I'm just gonna put some of this in here. Can you see that? Probably not. That. Okay, just kind of mix that in. These containers did stay nice and moist. Um, they got rainwater, and I did water them now and again, but uh, they did stay moist. They do have drainage in the bottom, and I took the caps off so that the drainage could be more free. And these strawberries are doing well, but they could probably stand to be fed as well. So, do that for now. Scratch that in without disturbing their roots too much. Have this oregano, this golden oregano. It's beautiful. I wonder if I could split this into two. Oh yeah, easy. I'm just gonna find a natural dividing point and I'm just going to pull this apart. Easy peasy. I'm going to kind of lean it toward the outside so that it will spread on its own and then tuck it in. And I'm going to put this one kind of around the bend on the next layer up. So if this one ends up here, then I'm going to put this one on the next layer up back here. Great. Now, this golden sage is so pretty. It's just so lovely. It's got uh, a light green and a dark green. It's got a very textured leaf. So really nice. I'm gonna put my plant marker in one of these because I will not remember. There for now. All right, let's see if this one could be divided too. I'm feeling down below the soil level and no, this is one plant like one stem, so it's not as easily divided as this one was, so that's okay. All right, so if this plant is going to be right here on the lower level, then I think I want this golden sage to be above it right here. Again, leaning outward. How about this variegated oregano? Can I divide this one up a little bit? Let's see. Yeah, there are multiple stems under the dirt in here. So this one's gonna get separated as well. Okay. I'm 
bottom. Is the bottom good place for the lemon thyme? I think I have a bug on me. Ugh. Sure, why not? We'll put it on the bottom. This plant's actually pretty dry. I should have watered it first, but here we are. All right, and I think I'm gonna put uh, one of the common times in this top layer. Let's just get this stacked up the way it's gonna go. No, that's bottom. This is second. All right, so I'm gonna put the common time up here in this last grouping right here. Okay, so that is my stacking herb garden. Uh, again, these are the Dollar Tree stackable containers. I don't think they have them in stock in the stores right now, but you might be able to find them at their online ordering. I'm not sure. Anyway, so let's just review. I've got lemon thyme on the bottom here, golden oregano, strawberries. This is the variegated oregano. More variegated oregano, more golden oregano and the golden variegated sage. So it's a really, really nice way to have a little herb garden. You could put this on a porch or a patio. Um, you could put this on a balcony in your apartment or your townhouse, um, or even on your front porch. So uh, yeah, this is a great way to go. Um, if you don't uh, have access to the stackable container, um, you could use any sort of any sort of container. You could put them in a plant stand, little small pots in a plant stand, all kinds of ways to make your container gardens look really cute for your herb garden. So this one is finished. So let's set it aside. It's a little dirty. You can see it's dirty on the outside and I will use the hose to actually, let me do that right now. I think I'm gonna put some mint in this container. Give it lots of room to grow. All right, this is the chocolate mint. Oh, chocolate mint, so yummy. You definitely wanna put mint in a pot, or if you put it in a flower bed, make sure that that flower bed is bounded by like concrete sidewalks or patio edges or something like that. Don't let it go straight up against your lawn or any other part of your garden space because mint will spread like wildfire and you will have a hard time getting it out. I'm gonna put this rosemary plant into this nice large container. I like the idea of having it in a larger container because then it gives its roots lots of room to grow into a big plant. And it's always nice to have a big rosemary plant on hand. Um, also, that will allow me to take it inside and have a decorative, um, a decorative plant inside the house during the winter. So again, I said I was gonna leave this plastic on while I plant it up because um, I don't want the pot to get too dirty. So I'm just making a well down inside here, room for the root ball. I am gonna need more soil in here. Oh, I wanted to add some biotone in here too. It's a little dry on the inside there. Rosemary is such a wonderful plant. Oh, you can use it for cooking, but it's also just beautiful on its own. I didn't do a very good job of getting this centered in the pot. Oh well. All right, you don't wanna make it like really hard compacted in there, but you do wanna, um, you know, gently tap the soil. Oh, you know what? I'm feeling down in the soil here. This pot actually had one, two, three different rosemary plants in this one pot. So if you wanted to be thrifty, you could buy this one $9 rosemary and divide it into three large plants. That would be a really nice way to go. And maybe I will divide this at the end of the season into more than one pot. We'll see how much it grows. All right, we're making progress. What do I have left? Lemon balm, lemon thyme, regular thyme, and spearmint. I definitely want the spearmint in a pot. So let me get one of these small white pots here. The spearmint is something that I grew from seed this year. Um, I didn't get very good germination on it at all. Really only, I don't know, looks like two or three of them. I'm gonna just put them all in the same pot. I don't think that's spearmint, I think that's a weed. 
So that's done. That was quick. I'm going to do one little decorative pot of thyme. I'm going to fill it quite full, actually, just because it's pretty that way. All right, so this pot will fill in. It'll be a nice little mound of thyme. That'll be pretty. Lemon balm, lemon thyme, and regular thyme. I think I'm actually going to plant these into the ground. Okay, so I have my rosemary. I've got my stackable planter here, my uh, chocolate mint, spearmint, regular thyme, and back in here there's some oregano. These are spring bulbs, uh, daffodils, that are still dying back, um, but they won't be here much longer. Um, actually, these are hyacinths, I think. Um, so I'm going to plant my lemon balm kind of in here and my thyme kind of in here. Um, just as kind of a meandering ground cover. And they can duke it out with this uh, oregano. I know lemon balm spreads kind of like mint does, but I think it's a little bit easier to control than the mint is. And time right in here. Got violets coming up like crazy this year. They really, really came up. And ivy everywhere, always ivy. Put the lemon time right here. Hello, wormy. Right, just plug these little time babies in here. There we go. Well, that brought me to the end of my herb planting, but um, I still have my annuals to do, but I also have all that work inside to do. What should I do? I should go do some of that work then come back out here after I've gotten some of it done. That's the responsible thing to do. Nah. Okay, let me get started with this one. Let me take that tag off of there. All right, this is definitely going to have the Prince Tut grass and uh, then I'm not sure what it's going to have. Let's see. It's as good as any other. We'll put these purple queens, two of those in, and then two of the caliber crows in, and the prince tut grass in the center. Remember, this is going to get three, maybe even four feet tall if I treat it well. These caliber crows should fill out and, and droop, and these should fill out and droop. And so I think that'll be nice. The sun's starting to come up. It's getting to be midday here, which means that my project inside is further and further behind. All right, I think this one's looking pretty good. Yay! What do we have to choose from? We've got three pentas. Two lantanas and one yellow calibrachoa. And I do want these to be situated near each other. However, they could be in different pots right next to each other. That would be fine too. Um, let's see, some lantanas get huge and some stay small. Let's see what this one's gonna do. This one is going to be two feet tall and two to three feet wide. That is a big plant. I'm only gonna put one of these in this pot, two feet tall two to three feet wide. I'm going to put this in the center of this pot. I mean, that could fill up that pot on its own, couldn't it? I need more pots. How about this? Calibrachoa, Aloha Canary Yellow. This will get six to eight, no, six to ten inches tall and twelve to eighteen inches wide. So it'll stay low and droop out. So that I could put this in front of this in the same pot. And these pentas, eight to 22 inches high and 10 to 18 inches wide. Talk about variation. It'll either be less than a foot or almost two feet. Well, which are you gonna do? Um, I mean, I really love the lantana and I want it to succeed. So I think I'm actually I'm going to use this nice big pot just for one lantana and this calibrachoa. And then these pentas are going to have to go somewhere else. And this other lantana is going to have to go somewhere else. And I'm going to put this cali uh, the lantana kind of in the back. And then this calibrachoa is going to go in the front. 
So I, uh, the bottom of the root ball was too big to fit in this pot very nicely, so I took out some of the soil. I left as many of the roots as I could, but I did have some roots come off. I really don't want this to be up above the level of this container, so because then it's too hard to water. Yeah, I think this is all I'm going to put in this pot. This will be the back. This will get nice and big and wide, and this will be the front, and it'll stay low and trail. Now I need a plan for those. I think I'm going to put, I'm actually going to reuse this rosemary pot, which is pretty nice. I mean, it's not perfect. It's just a plastic pot, but it's nicer than an average plastic pot. Uh, so I'm going to put the lantana in here. Why not? Because it's getting down to the dregs at this point. Again, if this gets to be two feet tall and three feet wide, is that what it said? Yeah, two feet tall and two to three feet wide. This pot will barely contain it. So this might not be the best pot for it, but it's what I have. So we're going to do that. All right, I need a pot for these pentas, and I want it to be kind of tall and narrow. So let me go look for a black nursery pot. All right, so as nursery pots go, this one is not as ugly as others. It's kind of just a plain black pot, and after I clean it, you might not really see it too much, especially when I put it in a grouping of other pots. So I'm going to go with that. And I'm just going to put all three pentas in here, and then hopefully it'll be a very bountiful, overflowing pot. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, I really want to invest in some nice big, big, big containers, um, hopefully the self-watering kind like aqua pots or something like that, but they're just so pricey. I have a hard time pulling the trigger on that. So here we are. All right, here we go. So a nice big full pot of pentas. So this brought me to the end of my annual planting and also my herbs are done. So let me clean up this mess and arrange things and I'll show you how it looks after it's all set. Well folks, here it is, my container garden for the courtyard this year. The collection of planters is a little bit scattershot, a little bit mismatched, but oh well, this is the way it is around here. Um, I really like the way it's very bountiful. I'm hoping that these herbs fill in really nicely and that these flowers fill in. I may end up rearranging over the course of the summer, especially with these two lantanas right next to each other. Maybe this one will go over there, um, you know, whatever. Also, I don't know what's going on with these hydrangeas back here. These are strawberry vanilla hydrangeas. Uh, I have three of them. Two of them are doing wonderfully, and the one in the center is absolutely not doing anything. I've treated them all exactly the same, and I don't know why that middle one is not doing nicely. So if it continues to uh, not be healthy, I'll pull it out, and before I replace it this year, I'll probably put some of these pots back in there, especially after they grow tall. So, um, so this is how the courtyard is looking. Get ready to have some things coming into bloom over here. And uh, on the rose, the new dawn rose is full of buds. Um, I wish it were more full of foliage, but I don't give it enough sun. It's just starting to get sun on it for the day, and it'll only last about two hours. So and that's the other thing about this collection of plants in these pots. Um, pretty much all of them want to have full sun, except maybe the strawberries could do with some shade. But none of these are going to get full sun. They're all going to get warm, hot sun from about... Uh, 10 30 in the morning until about 1 or 2 in the afternoon so maybe three or four hours of really hot intense sun um, but none of them are going to get uh, six hours of sun so hopefully they'll all do okay anyway I am gonna have to come out and water them frequently especially the smaller plots thank you so much for joining me today in Harmony Hills don't tell anybody that I was here uh, I was supposed to be inside oh well I've actually wild away about two and a half or three hours out here fussing around with my pots so much for getting my work done. Oh well, this was so much more fun. And it was really nice and fun to have you along for the ride too. So thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. What are you doing in your containers? Do you have an area like this? What do you think of the mismatched pots here? I'm, I'm kind of not sure about that, but you know, budget is what it is. So, you know, you do with what you have. 
So anyway, thanks so much for joining. I hope to hear from you. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll come back very soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.